Well, some people on the tube have contacted me wanting to know more about EGR valves and how they work. There are three basic kinds, a full diaphragm model, a full electronic servo controlled model, and a hybrid model that uses electronic sensors and it's diaphragm operated. Since this Ford is a primitive car with a primitive design, it uses the diaphragm model with no sensors, just uses vacuum to control it. There's a big rubber disc in there, like a big flat gasket with a spring and a pin, often the size of my finger on the end, and the pin gets sucked in and out of a hole by vacuum control from the motor. That acts as a valve. That hole is attached to a pipe or part a duct to the intake manifold. In this model, it has a pipe. That pipe runs to the exhaust manifold, usually someplace close to the head. This wonderful Pontiac 2.8 does what I call the hybrid model. It has electric wires going to it for sensors, and it also has a vacuum hose going to it so it can actually operate it, so it uses the diaphragm too. So it works in exactly the same way, except it sends information to the engine computer. And thus in turn, the engine computer can control it to open and close because there's constant vacuum going all the way to it all the time. On this funky Saturn car, we have the third kind, fully electronic servo controlled. And you can see it right down there. No vacuum lines, just wires. It's an electric motor in there that screws the pin up or screws the pin down in the hole we were talking about. So what does an EGR do for a motor? Nothing good. It's an emissions device. It only does good for the environment. It doesn't help your motor one bit and it hinders performance. How it works is whatever kind of sensor or vacuum delayed device it uses to control itself it has to wait till the motor is semi-warmed up and running at usually more than 1500 to 2000 RPMs. So then while the car is in drive or cruising along, usually more than 20 kilometers an hour, the valve slowly starts to open and allows exhaust gas to go right back into the intake manifold system and pollute the incoming charge of air and gas. Not good. So although polluting that charge doesn't make your engine go faster, it makes it go slower and reduces horsepower and maybe a tiny bit of efficiency, it does something good for the environment. When your burning mixture is polluted with a little bit more exhaust than it would like to have, well then that makes a less efficient firing process. So your engine burns at a cooler temperature and a little bit less pressure in the cylinders. So what good is that, you say? Well, in Canada, not a lot because we've always got blue skies but if you lived in California and you looked up at the sky on a sunny day it might be a little bit piss yellow. Well if you don't have an EGR valve and you've got good compression and maybe even too much timing you produce a gas called nitric oxide. Well that's bad for the environment because nitric oxide is unstable and would like to react with water. It becomes a type of nitric acid which makes yellow haze in the sky and also add rain and can cause lung damage. Some symptoms if your car EGR valve is not working right. Well, one is stalling or rough idle. Well, that means it can be stuck open, open part way or open all the way. Usually if it's open all the way, your engine won't idle at all. It just keeps stalling. That's because too much exhaust is getting in with too little air. Open part way, well then it stumbles and stalls the odd time and has rough idle. Not opening at all, well then you might have pinging or pre-detonation on acceleration and sometimes problem of burning exhaust valves because some engines can't adjust the fuel mixture enough to fix the lean problem it causes in the engine when there's no exhaust recirculating and it can cause the engine to run a little bit hot which causes pre-ignition uh, and burnt exhaust valves. This is especially prominent on old Honda Accords from uh, like 1989, maybe even 1988 to 1992. Things that can go wrong with these valves are diaphragm leaks. Well, that's easy to test. You just hook a vacuum hose to one, stick it in your mouth and suck. If it pulls itself all the way back, very many of them you can see or you can disconnect them, and it stays back when you stick your finger on the tube and stop the suction from releasing, well then it's functioning. The diaphragm is good. The other problem you may be getting in there is the tube or port that the valve sits on is clogged with carbon. So then you just remove the valve and stick screwdrivers and metal wires and whatever else you can get down there to clean out the crap in there. 
Some cars have a problem with the sensor, which could be a vacuum operated sensor or an electronic sensor, turning the valve on too soon before the motor is warmed up, and that causes the engine to stall while the motor is in an in-between warmed up stage, but not when it's warm and not when it's cold. Some cars have emission requirements which are technically advanced enough that they don't even need EGR valves or they're old, old enough they don't have them. In Canada, we started getting EGR, EGR valves in 1973-74, usually just on the V8 cars. On performance engines, you tend not to want to have an EGR valve, but sometimes, of course, because of emission laws, you can't get away with it. But if you decide to disconnect your EGR valve, you know, the wires or hoses going to it and run without it, well, that might not be good because your engine will run possibly too lean, possibly pre-ignition, and you may get a little bit too much nitrous oxide emissions and not pass an emissions test. It's, it's, you know, it might idle fine, but it just might surge and just not quite feel right cruising down the highway. It won't be smooth. It'll be running with white spark plugs in condition of too lean. Well, I guess the easiest way to tell, if you have one of the old-fashioned kind, that just use vacuum and nothing else, if it's functioning correctly, is start your car up. doesn't matter whether it's warm or cold. Put a vacuum hose on it and then just suck on it hard yourself. It should stall the motor while it's idling. That means your passageways are clean and the EGR valve is functioning. If nothing happens when you suck it, yet you see the parts moving, well then that means the system is clogged. Or if you suck on it but it won't hold vacuum and the parts aren't moving or not moving for very long, well that means you need to replace it, the diaphragm leaks. So to sum it up, EGR valves are kind of a good thing and kind of a bad thing. Sometimes you li can live without them and sometimes you can't. But most of the time you have to live without, I mean with them.